It's been a long time since any United fan could say with any real confidence that our club is planning correctly, our club is making the right decisions, our club is heading in the right direction. And going into this summer, whether it's Eric Ten Hag, whether it's Maurizio Pochettino, whether it's Ralph Rannick as part in a consultancy role, we don't know at all. But what I want to do in this video is run through the plan that Rannick has given the board. No smoke and mirrors with Ralph. He's honest, he's open, and I love that. And it makes it easier for us, under, us fans to understand exactly what Ralph is trying to tell the club to do. And in my opinion, what well, the club needs to listen to him. I'm going to explain all of that in this video. Hopefully it's a bit informative, insightful. That's what the videos are always designed to do. Uh, so if you do enjoy the video by the end of it, please would you consider going down there and hitting that subscribe button. As I said, it would only take you a second. Boom. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell as well. You get a ping every time I go live with a video. But yeah, this is what I want to speak about. Ralph is somebody who, from day one at Manchester United, he's not really lied. He's not had to. It's, it, that's not part of his integrity. Having spoken to Guido Schaefer, uh, um, chief reporter at... Oh, what's the name of it? I can't remember the name of the newspaper. Sorry. Sorry, Guido. Uh, I've been speaking to him a few times. He, he's known Ralph for like 10 odd years. More than that, actually. He knows about his integrity and, and he doesn't lie. And I, that openness has made it easier for United fans to understand exactly what it is that Ralph is trying to achieve. So let's go through the four points that Ralph has given to United's board, or at least suggested to United's board, said, this is what we need to do to change this club and take it forward. And point one is spot on. We know it is, and it's painful to read, but it's just the truth. Manchester United need to ape Manchester City and Liverpool by recruiting unconditionally to the specific playing style of the new manager once known. Now, aping means imitating. You see something, you copy it. That's what Manchester United need to do when it comes to signings. Because look, let's take a look at what Man City have done since Guardiola came in. And I'm not looking at the price tags because United have spent and wasted wasted enough money. If our, if our player recruitment was better over the last seven or eight years, we wouldn't be in this position. But look, Kevin De Bruyne, massive hit. Sterling, massive hit. Otamendi was a bit of a hit at the time-ish. Fabian Delph, a decent enough squad player. Yeah, I would say majority there are hits. Let's scroll up here. Let's see what else they've done. This is where he went absolutely mad, Guardiola, and City absolutely backed him. John Stones came in, 50 mil. Sane, 46 mil. Jesus, 30 mil. Gundogan, 25 mil. Claudio Bravo was brought in. Now, this is the best example I think we've got of a club truly backing their manager and signing players to a philosophy. He came in, 16 million. What happens? I think it's the next season, isn't it? Yep. Edison comes in, 36 million. Claudio Bravo wasn't right. Wrong decision. Let's change that. Then they signed Laporte. Benjamin Mendy obviously didn't work out. Carl Walker, Bernardo Silva, Edison, Danilo. They are backing their manager and they are signing players to a philosophy. Riyad Mahrez came in, the only play, only major signing they made there, but they didn't need to, having spent what in the three years before? 285 million, 193 million, and 180, 188 million. Liverpool, same sort of story. First year for Klopp, Mane, Van Alden. Karius obviously didn't work out for obvious reasons in that Champions League final. Clavan was brought in as a bit of, you know, Joel Matip on a free transfer. That's definitely worked out. Go up here, Van Dyke, boom, Salah, boom. Oxlade Chamberlain, I think, was a decent player. Andrew Robertson, probably the best value for money signing that they've made. Boom. Players signed to a philosophy of the manager. Scrolling up here, Allison, the difference maker. Naby Keita, Fabinho, Shakiri, decent enough signing. You know, the list goes on, man. Uh, Minamino, uh, they, didn't really, they didn't really need to sign them anybody. I suppose they kind of went down a little hill a little bit, but then they got, look, Tio Jota came in. Boom. Thiago. Meh. And then, of course, they've got, uh, what's his face? Luis Diaz now. Liverpool and City have both backed their managers and followed their plans, knowing that it's going to take time. It won't come in one window. It won't come with one signing. It's probably going to come with six, seven or eight signings and at the same time, getting rid of those wrong players. United have signed so many wrong players. We have to get it right. And looking at City and saying that we need to copy City, yeah, we fucking do. Look at them. It's painful to say. We've seen Liverpool win the Champions League and the Premier League. We've watched City win the Premier League time after time after time. How about you just admit when we got it wrong and start doing what they have got right? And Randnick is so spot on when he's saying that as point one. Moving back to the sec second point here, he's saying that Manchester United need to prioritise physical, aggressive players in the first instance after concluding this squad is too soft physically and have a thorough profiling of a player's DNA before signing. Now, this is not... 
an alarm bell. DNA is not an alarm bell here. He quite literally is talking about genetics. Let's go down here and let's see what he's saying. City and Liverpool have been built together and recruited over a period of five to six years, all of them under the premise of how the coaches want to play. I told the board this is what has to happen at United. Whenever the new head coach is clear, it has to be how does he want to play and what kind of players do we need for that? Then we come back to the DNA, the speed, the physicality. What do we need? This team does not lack technical players. It can do with more physicality. And it's this bit down here. It takes right decisions and clarity over where you want to go and what players you want and the manager. And then in every transfer window, try to get the best possible. This is rocket. I think it means this is not rocket science because it's not rocket science. It's dead fucking straightforward, man. That's what's painful for United fans. That's what's been so painful. We've chopped and changed different managers. And I remember when we got John Murto in and I was like, the idea that Manchester United now have got somebody who's sort of overlooking the vision of the, of the overall vision of the club so that we don't chop and change between managers and take huge U-turns and all of a sudden the squad which fit one manager just completely doesn't fit the other. And that's the, the mess that we've been left in now. We've got a, a, a squad that is still built of three managers' ideologies and philosophies and whatever you want to call it. It's just a mess. It has taken time at City and Liverpool, but they stuck to it. And that's, that's the second point he was raising. And I'll tell you one thing that really quite annoys me about this United team, right? You talk about physicality. You remember how good we were in that first 30 minutes against Crystal Palace? Underneath Ralph Ragnick. You know, we got it right. We were there. We were good. We, we were pressing. We, were, we just didn't have the, the quality and the fitness to do it for the full 90 minutes. So Ralph has, over this season, had to tinker and change and chop and switch and players in, players out, formation change. Trying to do whatever he possibly can to get the best out of this team. Hasn't particularly worked completely. But for me, I'm firmly looking at the players now. I'm absolutely firmly looking at the players. And as I said, I just love hearing Ragnik speak truthfully and accurately. That's most important. You can speak the truth if you want, but it means nothing. It means nothing. But the fact that he's so accurate just means that I think he's got to be trusted. We go into a bit more detail here. This is what he said before the game against Leicester, I believe. He said, it's obvious that something needs to be changed. Something needs to be rebuilt in the summer. This team could do with some highly talented, hungry players who really want to develop their own careers. I don't think it should be that much about signing big names. I wouldn't mind big names, but for me, it's important about being competitive, hungry, seeing a move to a club. And I've always believed this. Not only is a big contract, a big name club, but the next logical step in his career. I've got to press this button and keep going. If this happens, then you have a completely different level of motivation, aspiration, and inspiration for, to play for whatever club that is. That should be the major target for the summer transfer window. I just realized you didn't hear that little round of applause, which I just gave <laughs> Ralph Ragnick there. But it's not rocket science. It's what us as fans have been saying all along. And it's why, as I said, if I'm looking at spending 100 million this summer, I'd much rather, I think it, was, it would help Manchester United grow as a football club more to sign... Three players worth 35 million each than 100 million on Harry Kane. This squad just needs to... I don't think it can be done by an individual anymore. Jesus, Cristiano Ronaldo has proven that. The greatest of all time hasn't been able to come in and change that mentality. It's not something an individual can do anymore at Manchester United. It's far, far bigger than that. Going back to Ralph's plan, right? Point four. Being prepared to accept that it could take up to three transfer windows to put right, provided the plan is followed. Now, your immediate reaction to that would be like, Sam, really, we're going to go back to, uh, we're not going back to like one of those a proper rebuild. It's going to take three foot. We probably are because we've never truly, are you going to sell shot? If we, if we look at the list here and the big word, that I think the, the most important thing that Ralph said there, being prepared to accept that it could take up to three transfer windows to put right, provided the plan is followed. Now, the problem with these managers here is that the plan was wrong in the first place because the manager was wrong in the first place. Moyes, Fergie's biggest, biggest mistake probably was Moyes. Van Hal, Ed Woodward was the man who was in power there. It was more he was in control. And I think Van Hal never really stood a chance, if I'm being completely honest. Mourinho, maybe the closest we got, but it was Mourinho and United. It was only three years earlier where every United fan sat on their high horse looking down at Mourinho going, no way. No way is he ever going to manage United. Three years later, lo and behold, it happened. But then we turn to Solskjaer. He tried to re-establish things that have been lost under those three managers, but ultimately wasn't able to take us back to that top table where we want to be. And then Ralph Randnick has come in. 
Now, I'm not here saying that Ralph Rangnick is God's gift to football. But I tell you what, it feels like he's a genuine gift to United if we fucking let him do his job. The only reason he came to United wasn't to manage us for six months. That was just, in his view, in the way of him doing what the job, the job that he wants to do properly. He came to United for that consultancy role. He came to United because in his head, he goes, I'm out here, I'm locomotive Moscow, I'm comfortable, I've had success at Hoffenheim, I've had success at, at, at Leipzig, but you know what? Imagine I could be that man who really modernised Man United and steered them back towards where they should be at that top table. He took it on as a, the biggest challenge in his career. So if we were to take him for this six months, a role he's unfamiliar with, and then boot him out before the opportunity comes for him to do the thing that he can do and has done amazingly well at multiple clubs, then we're fools. We are fools. And we genuinely don't deserve to modernise a football club when the, when the chart, the person who can lead that charge is right there. And I think it should be Eric Ten Hag as the man who comes in. And I think everything that Ralph has, every, everything that Ralph has said there, if we look back at this, this plan here, this all four of those, Poppy and City, and Liverpool to bring in a, a sort of a recruitment style based on the manager and his playing style. Boom. Fine. Ten Hag. Yes. You, you know, he's a man. If you're looking at playing styles, then he's far more built on a philosophy and a natural playing style compared to compared to Pochettino. We know that, right? Prioritizing physical and aggressive players in the first instance and looking at a player's DNA. And as I said, it, when he says DNA, he's more talking about it's easy enough to take a player like Cristiano Ronaldo, who had that incredible natural work ethic and turning him into a superstar because he had the talent to match it. Talent really is nothing without attitude. And United have got so many talented players, but they know they're talented. They know they're good. Therefore, they don't want to fucking work for it. And they don't work for it. Simple as that. And that poisonous mentality is something that's infiltrated every single aspect of Manchester United. The Glazers have enabled it with their mentality and approach to owning our club. And with player power growing, player power growing, and has grown ever since Fergie left, we're in this position now where the players have, are all entitled and they think they're much more important than they are. In reality, woof, you can leave the club and you will not make a difference. We'll replace you in an instant. We won't forget you. And being prepared that it could take up to for a, a few three transfer windows to put right, providing the plan is followed. We all know that. We have to follow the right plan, though. There's no point following another plan and then us just ending in tears again. But for me, if we're looking at a plan, these two men can be the men to make that. Sorry, I was going to give you a headache. But Ralph Rannick is a man who has the plan. We've run through the plan. The plan's there. He's spoken about it in public. He doesn't need to hide it. He's got no agenda. His agenda is to be successful. And for Rannick to be successful, Manchester United have to modernise, have to go forward and improve as a club. So therefore, our motivations as fans align with what Radnick's are. And Eric Ten Hag is a man who will leave Ajax, and the only thing he will want to do is go upwards. He's won the Eredivisie title. Hopefully, he wins a third domestic double there. He'll, he'll, he'll want to win the Champions League. That's his aim. So if he wants to win with trophies, and we've got a man there who wants to modernise Manchester United, and we can combine the two ambitions there, this club can go forward, man. It really can. And we'll get out of this sort of inceptions, no, not inception, like interstellar style. It's like we've been stuck on the, I don't know what I'm talking about now. Uh, but that's, that's what Manchester United are doing to me at the moment. This is making you lose your chain of thought, just thinking, of, just get it right. Please, just get it right. And for me, that man there is a man that I would trust and a man I would believe in to get that plan right. And for us to actually now, for the next three years, under Ten Hag, to really recruit smartly, to really recruit properly. We'll, un we'll unearth a couple of stars, a couple of players that we signed for 20 million and who two years later are worth 60 million. We used to do that all the time, man. When do we do that anymore? We don't. We sign established players and it just hasn't worked. That Galactico mentality has to leave the club. Hopefully the ambition comes back in with it. That's what I think anyway. Look, you might disagree. And as I said, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a bit fed up of having these repeated conversations. But this in particular, I thought was a conversation that we need to really have because Ralph, Ralph Rannick has been so open in what that plan is. He's been so open about what is obvious for Manchester United's rebuild and what needs to be done. And I think there's nobody better placed than him 
to make that happen. So let me know what you think about that in the comments below. I'm sure you always do. You always will anyway. Uh, but make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new in town. But um, until next time, take it easy.